Uh, the problem that we're going to run into tomorrow is, and if you are uh, charting tonight again, and I really, really encourage everybody to do so, uh, you're going to see a lot of names in the middle of their channels, right? So for example, uh, just like the Qs, right? The Qs are just not at the lows, not at the highs. They're kind of right in the middle right now, at least for now, you're going to see a lot of things. So for example, if you're charting tonight, you'll see that Apple, although again, in a dead downtrend, and that's kind of the theme for every single stock, dead downtrend, again, still needs to take out macro levels. Again, Netflix. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition, right? The last uh, update of the week. It is Thursday. Hope everybody is having uh, a good day. Hopefully everybody's alive and kicking and healthy. Again, at the end of the day, that is the most important part. So uh, let's talk about the market. So yesterday, um, if you watched the video, uh, it was very sell bias, you know, pretty sell bias to go into the day. Um, the one thing that I really wanted for uh, today's trading session was obviously uh, a gap up, okay, a gap up, uh, a stuff into supply, and once you started seeing things started losing their 60 minute ranges, obviously that would have been a clear short, and obviously it would be kind of confirmed to what we saw yesterday on that pretty aggressive sell off to the downside. Um, the one thing that, that happened um, that sometimes, again, you, you have no control of, so we, we gapped down you know, pretty aggressively, okay? And I, I say this all the time, if you've been watching this broadcast, when you get a very aggressive gap down, okay, um, there's only a couple things you can do. You can do nothing, okay? Uh, you can uh, short into, uh, into this weakness, which is a disaster, okay? Absolute disaster. Uh, or you can wait for the channels to kind of set up back to the upside uh, to get the value. Because again, if you've been watching this broadcast for a while, you kind of know when stops, when stocks gap down very, very aggressively, especially after uh, a very aggressive, ugly session like we saw yesterday, usually it's going to put in its average true range on that pre-market low, okay? And we've been talking about this, uh, you know, many times, you know, very, very many times. So anytime you get a very aggressive move to the downside, especially pre-market, your job is to kind of wait to see these channels confirm back to the upside and go move ahead, because again, uh, gravity is real, but when you kind of measure gravity with emotional sellers saying, you know what, I'm going to give it one more day, and, and they woke up this morning, they saw the futures down, and they said, well, yeah, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be long the stock. Let me just kick it out at any price, and and, and that that play works a lot, just because again, uh, fear level, you know, takes over common sense, and a lot of traders basically don't even understand the levels that they're making sales in. So that was kind of our dilemma uh, at the open. And if you saw where the cues went pre-market, okay, you could clearly see they just missed taking out a big macro range. We'll talk about that in a second. But what that did create was an opportunity back to the upside. So when we talked about this morning, and this was, you know, this was eight hours ago, a uh, huge gap down this morning, although again, I am sell biased. And again, we were definitely watching uh, very, very specific names uh, after the gap down. The initial value will be to the upside because again, the average range of most of these stocks already put in at the open. Let's watch for channels to develop. Let's wait patiently. You know, again, there is no rush. Good morning. And although, again, I was really, really sell biased today. Again, I was sell biased in places that, again, were extremely lower. So if you look at last night's watch list, which again, for you guys watching the video, you guys don't see. Where the hell did I put the last night's watch list? Um, okay, that was weird. Uh, anyway, but if you look at last night's watch list, again, this is what I liked last night. Like, you know, I, I really liked Amazon. Uh, going into uh, yesterday's session, and I liked it at 2990, right below these two channels. The unfortunate part is it opened at 20. What is it? It opened up at 2956. So again, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't going to chase it down, down 40, 50 points below uh, the area where I wanted to short it, right? So there was a lot of names just like that. So I just kind of wanted to make sure we waited for the better value play. And the, the most amazing part, again, and I say this pretty much, you know, every video all the time. Again, you're not painted in. Remember, just because you're biased to one side of the market doesn't mean you need to stay there all the time. Again, this market is incredibly fluid. It changes by the second. Your game plan is literally uh, as good as the first two candles of the day because just so many factors 
are coming in. So many different players, so many different events, so many different headlines are coming in that a lot of times you, you know, really have to be uh, pretty quick on your feet and make, you know, make very, very good decisions based on what you're seeing, not what your research told you was going to be happening the night before. So we were kind of stuck in, kind of stuck in rock in a hard, hard place. We either uh, chase the volume down, which is a big no-no. We do absolutely nothing. But again, that's not really a proactive way uh, to conducting business. Or we can wait for the channels. Uh, we kind of got both. Okay. And what was cool about today's trading session was there wasn't like so many pivots. Like usually, you know, you turn around and say, well, there's Netflix went and Alibaba went and Square went and this one went. It wasn't like that because of the gap down. We were a little bit compromised. So we really needed to stay patient. But the, the most amazing part, and I say this every single day, it's not how many trades you put on, it's how many trades you put on properly. And you know, we'll get to the pivots in a second, but, but going into tomorrow, and again, this is kind of where we still talk about, even from yesterday, right? If you look at the cues, for example, okay, you, again, you can still just see this continuous downtrend, which is very, very important to understand. So any snapbacks that we're getting, and again, we said this exactly the same thing yesterday, but any snapbacks that we're going to get, there's a very, very good chance that it's going to be met with supply. And today was a perfect example. So we had that big reversal, right? So here's the gap down, right? Big gap down. It held the previous channels low. You can see here pretty, pretty easily. And it started running. And the bulls had a chance to really, really get aggressive. And look where they got rejected, right, guys? Look what they got rejected right at the five-day moving average. And again, if you've been watching this broadcast, for even, even the last three, four days, you know how important that five-day moving average was. So once the bulls uh, lost the five-day again, and we're, you know, again, we're using the cues now uh, as a broader measurement point, but once they lost that five-day moving average, a once really impressive rally uh, by the bulls, especially in the Dow, the Dow was up like 300 and change, went by really, really quickly. And you can see here what happened in the last hour, right? Like really, really, they got rejected and just really tanked. Uh, same thing with, with the Dow, right? Same thing with the Dow. Uh, same thing with S&P. We'll you know, kind of illustrate that with the, with the spies. So it's very, very important. So these levels, no matter what you're looking at, individual setups or whatever trader you are, these levels are very, very important macro. So for now, at least we have an idea of what we need to see for the bulls to wake up. And again, as you can see, this is a pretty much dead, you know, dead, dead ringer for a downward spiral until we start reclaiming. So again, until we see a close, for example, uh, on the SPX, let's just use the SPX right now, until the SPX reclaims 3280, again, you have to assume the market goes lower. Until the Qs, uh, until the Qs uh, reclaim, what is it on the five day, two, 267.50 at the minimum, right? At the minimum. Again, you can see all this macro channel, a lot of trees in the forest. So again, we're not talking about, well, once they reclaim this area, we're going to go higher. No, no. Baby steps, right? Day by day, trade by trade. So for the bulls to kind of get any type of any type of stability, uh, any type of uh, feet on the ground, they need at least to re get reclaim uh, this 267.50 level, and then you could start seeing a uh, little higher levels again. But it gets, it's again, it's me very, very tough, uh, very, very aggressive for the bulls to kind of make that headway. So again, you have to be sell biased every single day. Obviously, trade both sides of the market, but understand your macro levels. And if the bulls cannot hold on to those macro levels, you're going to probably see what we've been seeing now every single day. They hit supply, right? Hit supply, rejected. Hit supply, rejected. Hit supply today, again, rejected. So this whole area here, again, there's not a lot of room for interpretation here technically, okay? Uh, it held uh, this bottom range here around the 260 level on the Qs uh, today, and it held it, it held today, and it held it uh, right here on the lower Bollinger Band. But eventually, they start, the bears start building below that 260 level. Again, then, then we start going to that 257 weekly uh, that we talked about yesterday. So it's very, very important for the bulls to kind of uh, put up a fight, start reclaiming some at least small to intermediate, although important macro levels. But until then, again, expect more downside pressure. Again, will you have days that the stocks will wake up, you know, just go nuts? Absolutely. We actually saw that today uh, on a lot of names. We saw that today in Amazon. We saw that today in Tesla. We saw that today in NVIDIA. Uh, we saw that today in Square. So th there's going to be pools 
of intervals that you could definitely take advantage of. But again, guys, and again, this is reality. Again, I'm not biased here. This is not a biased opinion, long or short. I'm not a bear. Again, I, again, it's very, very important to understand that. But again, I'm a realistic person, right? I just see technical analysis. I appreciate it. And until it tells me different, you have to uh, kind of go about uh, your business to that direction of the market. Uh, the problem that we're going to run into tomorrow is, and if you are uh, charting tonight again, and I really, really encourage everybody to do so, uh, you're going to see a lot of names in the middle of their channels, right? So for example, uh, just like the Qs, right? The Qs are just not at the lows, not at the highs. They're kind of right in the middle right now, at least for now, you're going to see a lot of things. So for example, if you're charting tonight, you'll see that Apple, although again, in a dead downtrend, and that's kind of the theme for every single stock, dead downtrend, again, still needs to take out macro levels. Again, Netflix, same thing, right? Couldn't rally today, dead downtrend. Again, now at least we have a very, very specific area here, and maybe if it starts taking out this area here on this two, on this, excuse me, on this uh, rise in support here, uh, maybe it starts taking out lows. So again, we definitely have to watch Netflix for tomorrow. Uh, Alibaba, again, not a clear, you know, not a clear choice of a really aggressive sell-off, but again, you can start seeing it visually how close we are for a macro breakdown. Again, if you look at, for example, uh, a name like Facebook had a chance to really reclaim the five-day support and again, got rejected. And now again, the bottom of this channel is really ready for play. Google, same thing, right? Google is same thing. They got rejected. Again, you guys see the theme here, right? Rejected at the five, rejected at the five, rejected at the five. Again, it's very, very close to taking out macro areas. So, uh, you know, look, I'm definitely sell biased once again uh, going into tomorrow's session. But, but again, we will have pockets of strength. Uh, use that pocket of strength for um, uh, to take advantage of those intervals. But the one thing that you will see uh, that we saw today on some of the moves back to the upside, the spreads are big. The liquidity is thin. Again, when you have a, a sell-sided bias market, right, or at least a sell bias market interval, you're not going to have ridiculous liquidity. So, for example, today, uh, Amazon ran up like 60 points off the pivot. It felt like it ran up like on 1,000 shares. I'm exaggerating, obviously, but it felt that way. So, going into tomorrow, anything that you are trading, make sure that, again, especially on the long side, curb your tears, okay? Uh, especially to the upside, curb your tears. You're going to see a lot of liquidity completely re removed. Even a name like Facebook, that's traditionally really, really aggressive with volume. Although the volume's there, you're still gonna see really, really thin uh, liquidity. And again, re remember, li liquidity and volume are two different things. You have a lot of volume and still have a stock trade very, very thin. Um, so that's that. So if you look at uh, the pivots today, again, there wasn't a thousand pivots. But the right ones really did very, very well. And that was very, very important. Uh, this was my, you know, definitely my big move of the day here. Uh, ZM 480, 481. And this one I still like lower for tomorrow. Um, so 480, 481 rises to forward. If it builds below, can flush more. So ZM, you know, did very, very well. And it closed at the lows of the day. So here is ZM right over here. So here is the whole rising support here. Here is the whole 480, uh, 481. And this thing got just... Again, it got murdered. I think what other what, you know, what other adjective you want to use? It got really, really hit. Uh, traded all the way back down to this 459 level. If you look at uh, if you look at the daily chart, you'll see that again it closed below the five day. Right, that's the theme. Uh, so if it confirms the five day tomorrow and confirms today's channel, the next move down is all the way down to 438. So I, I definitely like this one. Uh, on the short side tomorrow, obviously, if it confirms, but really good move. I know congratulations to a lot of you guys who caught this thing. Uh, Facebook traded right back, uh, right just a little bit shy uh, of that 45 level, never even came close to confirming. And this is kind of what we meant by there was some shorts that did very well, some longs did very, very well. But again, it wasn't like random ones. The ones that did very, very well were names that we focus on, we trade every single day. So that was actually very important. Uh, Amazon obviously never got down to the 2957 level. Uh, that was you know, kind of an area that I wanted to see for more downside selling. It never got there. Uh, ZI never got the 37. ZM never got the 503. So there was a sell bias uh, to the downside. There was a buy bias to the upside. And again, that's the whole point of pivots. Pivots do not have 
uh, they don't have a bias. They don't have uh, an opinion which way they want to go. They're either going to uh, confirm to the upside or to the downside. So we have their channel, 503 to the upside, uh, 484, 81 to the downside. Obviously, uh, the Bears definitely won that battle. But this was definitely the biggest point mover of the day. Uh, Amazon 3002 needs to build. And Amazon went nuts. I mean, they had their whole... Uh, they had their whole uh, Amazon day today, right? And they was joking around, making fun, you know, playfully making fun. Again, I don't want to ruffle any very sensitive Tesla, Tesla, you know, boys and girls. Uh, it's talking about you know, like when is Amazon's battery day? Okay, obviously I'm joking. So here is the, the whole channel right here, right? This whole channel right here. Uh, here's the 3002, and it just went absolutely nuts. Uh, traded all the way to 30, 70, really, really big move. And again, you can see the common denominator why technical analysis works. Look where it got rejected. It got rejected right into supply and immediately turned around. Again, it's getting a little bit of after hours boost. I think somebody got, I think somebody upgraded them. But again, stocks, this is the whole point of stocks trading uh, into supply. So this whole channel for tomorrow uh, obviously will be going important. And obviously this channel to the downside, which we talked about this 29.56 level will be important as well. So again, uh, something has to give there as well. Uh, so yeah, take the move. Uh, Docu never got there. Uh, never got there. Uh, Netflix never confirmed down. It went to like 47... 467 60s never never confirmed here uh facebook stalled out right at the 52 level as well again when things got pulled things got pulled very very aggressively uh this was definitely at least the move today and it was pretty off this pivot it was very very aggressive um i bought it a little early initially uh i wound up losing a couple of bucks which wasn't a big deal because i wanted to test that level uh, the second time I went in a little bit, again, a little bit lower price. I just wanted to put the macro level on the Twitter feed. Uh, I broke even on the second time. The third one off this 385, 386, that was the big move. Uh, I thought this thing could get to uh, 400. 400 was right to the move. And again, macro levels are very, very important. If you look at Tesla, right, and if you see where the, uh, if you see where the 485, uh, excuse me, 485, 486 level was, you see this candle right here is the opening range candle right here, 485, all right, right here, 485. So 485, 486, finally when macro went right to the 400 level. So again, it's not how many you do, it's how many you do properly. Uh, again, tomorrow, I think we can find ourselves in a very, very uh, odd position, right, of kind of waiting maybe a little bit longer for things to play out. Uh, but if things do start to sell, we'll obviously go full concentration to the sell side and wait for macro channels to confirm. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I wish you all the best. Nothing but love, and I'll see you tomorrow.